in the previous lecture we can discuss classification of colloids number 1 is classification of colloids based on physical state there will be gives eight types of colloids second one classification of colloids based on inter reaction or affinity of phases it can be divided into two types lyophilic colloids lyophobic colloids next classification of colloids based on molecular size number one is multimolecular colloids second one macromolecular colloids associated colloids are misled example is soap and detergent next preparation of colloids number one is chemical methods by oxidation reduction hydrolysis second one is electrical disintegration by bridig's arc method this is a bridig arcs method this method can be used to prepare metals like gold silver and platinum third type will be method will be peptidization purification of colloidal solution what is means by colloidal solution that i always discuss in the previous lecture and by using a dialysis method and today we can discuss what are the properties of colloidal dispersion number 1 is general properties colloidal system is heterogeneous heterogeneous means different and consists of two phases one phase is called a dispersed phase another is a dispersion medium the dispersed phase particles slowly pass slowly through parchment paper or animal membrane but readily pass through ordinary filter paper the particles usually are not detectable by powerful microscopes second property will be a optical property the colloidal solution shows following properties that is number 1 tindall effect the phenomenon of scattering of light by colloidal particles and make path of light visible through the dispersion that is referred as a tindall effect that means this is a true solution and this is a colloidal solution the phenomenon of scattering of light by colloidal particles by making path of light visible through dispersion that is called a tindall effect tindall observed that when light passes through true solution the path of light through it cannot be detected that means whenever this light can be passed through the true solution the path of light cannot be detected but whenever it pass through a colloidal dispersion the particles scatter some light in all direction this is a low scattering of light takes place through colloidal solution and the path of the light through colloidal dispersion becomes visible to observer standing at right angles to its path the bright cone of the light is called tindall cone tindall effect is observed only when the following conditions are satisfied the diameter of the dispersed particle is no much smaller than the wavelength of light used second the refractive indices of dispersed phase and dispersion medium differ largely next importance of tindall effect it is useful in determining number of particles in colloidal system and the particle size therein second it is used to distinguish between colloidal dispersion and true solution what is the color color of colloidal solution depends on the wavelength of light scattered by dispersed particle the color of colloidal dispersion also ch changes with the manner in which the observer receives the light for example mixture of few drops of milk and large amount of water appears blue and when viewed by the scattered light and becomes red when viewed by transmitted light it depends on size of colloidal particles finest gold soul is red in color whereas with increase in size it appears a purple next property kinetic property the colloidal or macros microscopic particles undergo ceaseless random zigzag motion 
in all direction in a fluid. This is a ceaseless random zigzag motion in all direction in a fluid. This motion of dispersed phase particles is called a Brownian motion. Robert Brown, he is the British botanist, scientist, observed such motion of pollen grains under a microscope. The random motion was first explained by Albert Einstein in 1905. What are the causes of Brownian motion? Constant collision of particles of dispersed phase with the fast moving molecules of dispersion medium that is called the fluids. Due to this, the dispersed phase particles acquire kinetic energy from the molecules of the dispersion medium. This kinetic energy brights, brings a fourth Brownian motion. Next property will be electrical property. Charge on, number one is charge on collateral particles. Collateral particles carry an electric charge. The nature of this charge is same on all particles for a given collateral solution, which may be positive or negative. Here we can discuss what is the difference between positively charged salts, negatively charged salts. Here are examples, hydrated metallic oxides, Al2O3 into XH2O, CrO3 into XH2O. Yeah, P2O3 into XH2. These are the examples of positively charged salts. Metals, copper, silver, gold salts, metallic sulfides, arsenic sulfides, Sb2S3, cadmium sulfide. These are the examples of negatively charged salts. Second difference is basic diastub. Methylene blue salts are positively charged salts. Acid diastub, eosine. Congo red solution, these are the soul, these are the examples of negatively charged souls. Third hemoglobin is the example of positively charged souls, souls of starch gum. It is the example of negatively charged souls. Oxides, TiO2 soul, it is the example of positively charged souls. Gelatin, clay, gum souls, these are the examples of negatively charged souls. Next one will be a electrophoresis. Here, electrophoresis, here we can give the instrument electrophoresis. It can be, it is a U separate, U separate tube in which two platinum electrodes, one act as anode, another act as a cathode. Anode is a negative electrode, cathode is a positive electrode. And this U separate tube is filled with collateral solution. And these are two rods electrodes deep into that uh, solution. And whenever electric current is applied uh, across two electrodes, collateral particles move towards one or other electrode. That means here we can say that positively charged particles move towards anode and negatively charged particles move towards the cathode. That means here, and that process is called the electrophoresis. The movement of collateral particles under an applied electric potential is called electrophoresis. Positively charged particles move towards anode, while negatively charged particles move towards to cathode and get deposited on the electrode. Next one is application of electrophoresis. It is possible to know the sign of charge on the particles by using electrophoresis. Second, it is also used to measure rate of migration of soul particles. Third one, mixture of collateral particles can be separated by electrophoresis. Next one is a electroosmosis. Electroosmosis, movement of dispersed particles can be prevented by suitable means such as use of membrane. Then it is observed that the dispersion medium begins to move in an electric field this is termed as a electroosmosis. Next one is a coagulation. The precipitation of collides by removal of charged charge associated with collateral particles is called as a coagulation. The charge on the collateral particle is due to the uh, is due to the adsorption of ions on their surface for precipitation of lyophobic lyop collides. Removal of charge is required. A situation with lyophilic 
colloids is a little different. The lyophilic particles first attract the molecules of dispersion medium and form a layer of medium surrounding the particles which adsorb the ions. Hence, for the precipitation of lyophilic colloids, removal of charge on layer of medium is necessary methods to affect the coagulation. Number one, by electrophoresis, uh, the colloidal particles move towards suppositely charged electrodes, get discharged and precipitate. Second, by mixing two oppositely charged salts, oppositely charged salts when mixed up in almost equal proportion, neutralize their charge and get precipitated. Example, mixing of hydrated ferric oxide. It is a positive sol and arsenic sulfide, it is a negative sol, brings them in the precipitate form. This type of coagulation is called a mutual coagulation. Third one will be a by boiling. When a soul is boiled, the adsorbed layer is disturbed as a result of increased collision with molecules in dispersion medium. This reduces charge on the particles and subsequently set, settling down as a precipitate. Number fourth one is a by persistent dialysis. On prolonged dialysis, traces of the electrolyte present in the soul are removed almost completely. The colloids then become unstable and finally precipitate. Fifth, by addition of electrolyte, when excess of an electrolyte is added, the colloidal particles are precipitated. Next one will be a hardy skulls rule. Greater the valence of the flocculating ions added, the greater is its power to cause a precipitation and this is known as a hardy shells rule. In the coagulation of negative soul, the flocculating power allows the order Al3 plus is greater than barium 2 plus and is greater than Na plus. Similar for coagulation of positive soul, ferric FeCN6 4 minus is greater than PO4 3 minus, is greater than SO4 2 minus, is greater than Cl minus. That means here we can give the example collateral particles as like this. Emulsion, a collateral. A collateral system in which one liquid is dispersed in another immiscible liquid that is called as a emulsion. Types of emulsion, oil in water. Second one is water in oil. Oil in water, consider first diagram, oil in water. It is the emulsion in which dispersed phase is oil and dispersion medium is water. For example, milk when it's in cream. In the second diagram, water in oil, it is the emulsion in which dispersed of phase is water and dispersion medium is oil. For example, cold cream, butter, cold liver, oil. Next, uh, difference between oil in water and water in oil. In oil, oil in water, oil is the dispersed phase, water is the dispersion medium, water in oil, water is the dispersed phase, and oil is the dispersion medium. Second difference, oil in water, if water is added, it will be miscible with the emulsion. Water in oil, second difference, if oil is added, it will be miscible with the emulsion. Third, in case of oil in water, an addition of small amount of an electrolyte makes the emulsion conducting. In water in oil, addition of small amount of an electrolyte has no effect on conducting power. Number four difference, oil in water is, water is continuous phase. 
water in oil oil is continuous phase number fifth difference oil in water basic metal sulfates water soluble alkali metals soaps are used as a emulsifiers and water in oil water in soluble soaps such as zinc aluminum iron alkaline earth metals are used as a emulsifiers next one will be properties of emulsion number 1 emulsion can be diluted with any amount of the dispersion medium on the other hand the dispersed liquid when mixed forms a separate layer the droplet in emulsions are negatively charged and can be precipitated by electrolytes third properties emulsion shows brownian movement and tindall effect number 4 the two liquids in emulsion can be separated by heating freezing or centrifuging and last point into that topic is application of colloids number 1 cake milk cream butter ice cream ice cream fruit juices whipped cream are colloidal in nature we know that addition of electrolyte like potash alum is one of the important methods in the purification of water third that is a photographic films are prepared by coating an emulsion of light sensitive silver bromide in gelatin over glass plates or celluloid films most of the medicines are colloidal in nature for example here gives a detol example argirol is a silver sol used as a eye lotion this latex is an emulsion in which negatively charged particles of rubber are dispersed in water smoke is also colloidal system which mainly consists of charged particles of carbon dispersed in air next one the removal of the colloidal particles is done through a uh, quatrel precipitator this is a quatrel precipitator number 1 is electrical application of colloids number 1 electrical precipitation of smoke smoke is colloidal solution of solid particles of carbon arsenic compound dust in air when smoke is allowed to pass through the chamber containing plates having charged the particles settle down on the floor of the chamber the precipitator is called a quatrel precipitator second purification of drinking water water obtained from natural sources contains a colloidal impurities gets coagulated and settle down this makes water potable photographic plates films and industrial products like paints inks synthetic plastics rubber graphite lubricant cements are colloids medicines are colloidal in nature colloidal in nature colloidal med medicines are more effective owing to large surface to volume ratio of colloidal particles and easy assimilation these are the application of colloids so today we can discuss about the points like number 1 is properties of colloidal dispersion here number 1 carries general properties second will be a optical property that is a tindall effect experiment must be carried out tindall effect next one what are the importance of tindall effect color color of colloidal solution depends upon wavelength of light scattered by dispersed particles fourth property will be kinetic property here we can study brownian motion 
What are the causes of Brownian motion? Next property will be electrical properties, difference between positively charged souls, negatively charged souls, electrophoresis, application of electrophoresis, electroosmosis, coagulation, methods to affect coagulation by electrophoresis, by mixing to oppositely charged souls, by boiling, by persistent dialysis, by addition of electrolytes. And last point is Hardy cells rule. Here we can use next point will be emulsion, types of emulsion, oil in water, water in oil, difference between oil in water, water in oil, properties of emulsion that I always discuss and applications of collides may be used, electrical precipitation of smoke, purification of drinking water, photographic plates, and last one will be a medicine. Thank you.